Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. I'm going to continue my video about Helena. If you feel like you missed something, check out the previous video. The link is in the description. This is Helena in 1890. This is the Helena power block, supposedly built in 1889. With a population of only 3,000 to 13,000, every citizen must have been involved in the construction of the city, women, children and the elderly included. Unfortunately, there are no records of this massive cooperative undertaking. Isn't it newsworthy that 3,000 people got together to build a city that could architecturally rival any European one? I wasted approximately three hours of my precious life looking through old newspaper archives of Helena to learn more about the people who built Helena, you know, the workers, architects, designers, carpenters, artists, artisans, bricklayers, construction companies, construction machine makers, etc. I found next to nothing. Rather than a gold rush, I suspect that the pioneers going west were looters. They knew of the ancient buried cities out west and went to take whatever they could find. If the mud diggers managed to excavate a building, they repurposed it. That's my unflattering take on American history. Curiously, our great-grandparents didn't talk about this time of grand construction either. They more often talked of the destruction of buildings than their construction. Our great-grandparents experienced several consecutive wars between 1800 and 1945, in which the old world was blown up. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. This is the Helena County Courthouses, photo from 1887. Apparently it was customary to first build houses before roads were made. I see hints of the buildings having been dug out instead of built. There were major fires in 1869, 1871, 1872 and 1874 that burned many grand buildings to the ground. This photo shows the aftermath of the 1871 fire. The people look like they are posing for an accomplishment, not a tragedy. I have the same questions as in other cities across old America. How does brick and rock burn so easily? Why did they already have all these massive buildings in 1871 if the first Woodhouse camp was made in 1865? Why did great fires keep repeating? Weren't security measures put in place after the first fires? Was the old world being destroyed while a new, much simpler one was being built and populated? Here are some more photos from 1870 to 1880s. This is an orphan's home in Helena. Another Helena orphan's home. Why does a low population town need large orphanages? Were these buildings repurposed as such? What happened to the parents? Were orphans used to repopulate these empty buildings of a previous civilization? Were the parents killed and the children educated in false history? This image was made in 1887. I'm not claiming the cattle herding settlers couldn't have built this stuff. But it's not how cowboy life was portrayed in the media. It's not how they built their towns. It would have required some kind of machinery or a much longer time to chisel rocks. It would be interesting to see a documentary about the building techniques the Wranglers used but found no such report. This picture is from 1884, the Hospital of Helena, topped by a Celtic cross. This is the Canyon Ferry Dam in Helena, 1880s. Those very few able-bodied men were incredibly productive. While mining for gold, they managed to build the biggest swimming facility in the world, several government buildings, hotels, hospitals, and even a dam. Wait. They didn't only build one dam. This is the Hauser Dam that generated electricity for all of Helena. 
I guess you could argue they had enough gold to pay the best engineers. That's a fair argument, and a possibility. But then we'd have to have construction photos or plans. All I found out about this dam was that it was supposedly built by a Samuel Hauser, who was convicted of fraud in a court of law. A fraudster built this magnificent piece. If so, where are the construction photos? They didn't have much photography in those days. Okay. Then where are the plans? The plans went missing. Alright. The place in this photo is called the Algeria Shrine, allegedly built in 1920, again, based on Moorish architecture, Islamic architecture. Exactly what we'd expect the Protestant Christians to build in the vast wilderness of Montana, right? Having been built much later, I expected to find plenty of photos of its construction, but I didn't. Of course, there are always colorful explanations and stories to go along with each anomalous building. This is downtown 1897, looking like any European city of the time. The population of 1900 was listed as 10,000. I've traveled the world but never seen a town of 10,000 people that looks anything like this. In this image, we see what is supposed to be a 1868 photo of a hotel in Helena. 1868. That's three years after wooden huts were set up as a gold camp, and 22 years before the city was supposedly built. Most of the photos and dates in this video are sourced from the Helena History website at helenahistory.org. 1880s Helena also had a fleet of steamships, trains, a large railroad station, fairgrounds, and many other things too numerous to picture here before the city was built in 1890. Who built really built Helena? We were taught that the Indians were primitive people living in small tents made of fabric. Was that perhaps a fabrication? Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.